So you're new to Blender and you're trying to figure out how to use this beast of an application. And you're just trying to do simple things like duplicate objects. And you're looking at all the controls and all of the buttons and you're just lost and bewildered. Where's the override? The override! That's what this video series is about. It's about showing you how to duplicate things in the many ways that Blender can do it to give you different kinds of results based on the different types of data that you're trying to duplicate. When thinking about repeating elements, we want to consider what method to use. And to know which method to use, we need to know whether we're duplicating single items or groups of items. In this series of tutorials, we're going to look at these different methods. Basic duplication via the duplicate object command, linked duplication via the duplicate linked command, using the array modifier for duplication, object on object instancing, collection instancing, grouped duplication via parenting, linked collections, and library overrides. Replication ultimately comes down to what needs to be done with the replication. So we have to ask ourselves a series of questions. The first being for single objects. Do you need a duplicate that is a brand new object unlinked to the original? Do you need a duplicate that is still linked to the original as an instance, meaning we can make a change to one and all the instances are updated with that change? Do you need the ability to texture the duplicate independently of the source, but still have it linked? Is it a group of items that needs to be duplicated? Do you need the ability to add or subtract objects from the source and have those changes propagate to the instanced objects? If it's a group of items, is it necessary to control the individual components of the duplicates? Meaning, do you want to move or rotate or scale individual components, but still have it linked back to a primary source? So we're going to begin looking at some very, very simple examples of what we're talking about. I'm going to start off the scene by adding a cylinder. And this will be our starting point. What we want to do is duplicate this in a couple of different ways, and we're going to focus on single object duplication. The first thing that you can do is simply duplicate it without any linking to the original. So when we come up to object, we can go to duplicate objects, press the X key to move that along the X axis. When we look over in the outline or back to the original and we expand it, we can see that there is a mesh icon here that says cylinder. And when we come down to the data object properties, we can see at the very top it says cylinder. So this is a container that contains a polygon mesh called cylinder. And they can be named independently. So if I name the mesh, cylinder mesh, the cylinder container references that. If we look at the second object, it still contains cylinder.001. It's a duplicate of the original, and they are unlinked. So this has many uses. You may want to duplicate something to create a new starting point, and you don't want it to be controlled by the original. So for instance, if I come in and create a material, with the first cylinder selected, we'll call this green, change the base color to a green color. Then we look at this in a shaded mode. Only that first cylinder received the green color. So the two are very, very much independent. If I press the tab key and change the shape of this in some way, for instance, moving it up, it again is completely independent. So let's remove the duplicate and then use the duplicate linked command, press the X key, move it off to the side, and now these two are completely linked. When we expand this, we can see that both of them reference cylinder mesh. So if I edit the duplicate, both of them are linked together, and it doesn't matter what I do to one, the other changes. So this can be really good, but at an object level, they still have independence, so I'm able to move and transform, meaning rotate, scale. At an object level, they retain independence. So let's pull out another linked duplicate, option D. Pull that off along the x-axis, and we'll just move that right there. 
Another thing that you can do with linked instances is texture them independently. This is something that can happen very commonly. By default, if we change the material on one, all of them are going to change. So for instance, if I remove the material and create another one, let's call this one red, they all get textured that red. So that's another way that they're linked together. But let's say this one, we want it to be textured independently. When we come over here and look at the fact that there is a little icon that you could totally miss if you're not looking at it, called link. So there are two options. Right now it's linked to data. And we want it to go to object. Well, let's expand this out and take a look at this. We're going to note that when I expand this, we go to cylinder and then we expand and red, the material, is applied at the mesh level. Well, that doesn't give us the ability to then change it. Anytime you change any instance, all the materials are going to change. So we will change this so that it goes to the object level. And then we need to assign material green. And it overrides and green becomes the material that's assigned at the top container level to this object. And then it becomes independent. This is something that can be very useful for still retaining the ability to come in, say, for editing, and make a change, but have a material degree of independence. So let's say that we want to now operate at more of a group level as opposed to an individual object level. What I'm going to do is remove these, and let's create a couple more linked duplicates. So Option D, X, and then I'm going to press R a couple of times. And we'll come over to this one and we'll give this an independent material. So I'm going to set this material linked at the object level and then we'll give it a green material just to make it interesting. In Blender, one of the things that you do for organizing objects is work at the collection level over here in the outliner. A collection is just a way of organizing objects in the hierarchy of objects in the collection. And so what we want to do is take these four objects and put them into their own collection. So I'm going to press the M key, and then we're just going to tell those to go into a new collection that we call cylinders. And there they go. They've moved into this collection. One of the features of a collection is that it's just a function of the outliner for organizing materials. It doesn't do anything over here in the 3D environment, meaning at this point, all of these objects are still independent objects, although they are linked as instances together. And we'd really like them to more function as a kind of a unit, a grouped unit. So what we would do is tell Blender to take this collection and turn it into what's called a collection instance. So I would right click on it, come down to where it says instance to scene, and now I can move this off and these function as a unit together. This has some real advantages. One of the big advantages is that it allows me to add or subtract objects to the source collection and have that change propagate through the scene. For instance, if I wanted another green cylinder, I could press Option D, the X key, and move that over and that change propagates to the scene. Or if I came over and changed this instance at an object level by scaling it, that change propagates to the collection instance. One of the downsides of this, and this is where we begin thinking about different ways of working with duplicate objects, and in this specific case, groupings of duplicate objects, is that it doesn't give us the ability to now jump in and change or adjust or alter any of the individual components of that grouping of objects. So for instance, I could at this grand object level, rotate all of these, and those rotate just fine, but I don't have the ability to gain access to any of these individual components. Now Blender does have a mechanism that allows you to do that by linking an external collection to this scene and then override those. But I'm going to do a separate video on that because that really kind of demands its own set of instructions and tutorials to really make that understandable. So let's jump in and take a look at another way of doing this via parenting. So I'm going to press the X key to remove that. Let's expand this collection of all the cylinders. We're going to note that my cursor is right here in its default position at the world origin. I'm going to press Shift and A, 
come down to empty and we're going to add a basic empty into that location. And we're going to call this group of cylinders. And I'm going to move this inside of the cylinders collection. And what we're going to do now is take all of these cylinders and parent them to that empty. You'll need to hold the shift key to do that and just drag them right on top of that. Now we have the ability with inside of the collection to change that at an object level if you want to think about it that way. So for instance, let's say that I want to duplicate that. The first thing that we need to do is right click on it and then say select hierarchy. So all of the subcomponents, the children objects, are selected. We can press option D and then we'll press Y to move them just along the Y axis. So each of the individual components is now using the duplicate linked command to create at an object level a link of the original, but we can still come over and transform them as an object, much like we had done with the collection instance. But what we gain now is the ability to come in and control each of those children objects independently. So this is one of the advantages of using a duplication via a parenting mechanism. One of the downsides of it is it does not allow you to add or subtract or make other changes to the source items at an object level and have that propagate. For instance, if I come to this cylinder and do an option D and then X, that new object does not propagate to the duplicate over here. So that's one of the challenges. The objects are simply linked at an object by object level. So really when you're coming to duplicate objects, it just depends on what it is that you need to do. This method by parenting and then duplicating the parenting can have certain advantages. And what we're going to do now is we're going to jump in in the next video, part two, and we're going to start looking at more real world ways of duplicating and controlling objects.